Hi, my name is Jadrian Wooten, and I'd like to talk to you about how me and a co-author have incorporated data visualizations and specifically Tableau in our economics courses. Uh, my colleague Joe Debol Lavoy is a professor of economics at Nazareth College, which is in Rochester, New York, uh, and I'm an associate teaching professor of economics at Penn State University, which is located in State College, Pennsylvania. Uh, Joe and I met a couple years ago at the Robert Morris Teaching Conference that's held in Pittsburgh every February. Uh, and at that conference, we had started to talk to each other about how we teach our classes and just sharing just general approaches, uh, partly because we both teach labor economics. We're both applied microeconomics uh, professors, and most of our courses have a heavy data component. When I first met Joe, I had just started using Tableau in my Economics of Crime course, and so I shared with him and some colleagues uh, different ways that I've approached the class. Since then, Joe has introduced Tableau into his courses, and I've expanded my use of Tableau across my courses as well. Collectively, we teach very data-heavy courses. Uh, we're not asking students to run regressions or to interpret any data, but instead we use data primarily to talk about the different concepts that we're covering. So whether that's labor economics, natural resource and environmental economics, economics of crime or public finance, uh, we are often trying to have students explain some data literacy through their projects and through Tableau specifically. I got really interested in this the first time uh, when I read How to Lie with Statistics. It was maybe 15, 20 years ago. For those of you who haven't read it, it's really focused on uh, how people can manipulate what they're saying using data and using the same data say something completely different. Uh, so this is a really old book. It's been around for decades now. Uh, they have newer versions that are out, but I had first read and got interested in this idea of data numeracy or data literacy uh, very early on, thinking about how we interpret graphs and charts and data and recognizing that we have a very powerful incentive to tell the truth and yet, lots of people aren't always that honest. So that was kind of in the back, uh, back of my mind throughout grad school and even in my early years at Penn State. And then a couple of years ago, I read How Charts Lie by Alberto Cairo. And that book really got me thinking about what I'm doing in my classrooms and making sure that my students are leaving my class uh, literate in reading charts. I was presenting lots of data through graphs, either from FRED or the BLS, and I realized that students don't always know how to read charts. Uh, and worse, if they're going to make charts for their employers, that they may unintentionally bis be misleading people. So How Charts Lie was really kind of the first book that really got me interested in thinking about changing my courses. And so I'd like to share with you how I use Tableau in my classes, and I can talk a little bit about how Joe uses Tableau in his. To give you some information, some background in terms of what your options are in terms of tools and languages, I found this really neat tweet a couple of years ago. Uh, somebody had gone through and looked at LinkedIn postings. Uh, for data scientists and data anal uh, analysts. And so they looked at five major cities, New York, San Francisco, Seattle, Boston, and Toronto, and they also classified it by what type of job it is. So entry-level jobs, associate-level jobs, or mid-senior jobs. They scraped those job postings and looked for particular tools that they expected those applicants to have. So if you look at data scientists, much different than data analysts, for most of our econ majors, they're not going to be data scientists. A data scientist needs to know SQL, Python, Excel, R, and a variety of other programs. We are, however, training a lot of data analysts. And so my students often go on to become sales analysts, pricing analysts, data analysts. And so I wanted to make sure that they were prepared with programs that are popular in the field. To be fair, I had been using Tableau before I found this. So this was a nice little self-serving uh, reminder that I had picked a good program. At the time, when I first thought about introducing data visualizations into my course, I was torn between Tableau and R. R does require a little bit more coding that goes into it. Tableau is more of a point and click type system. There are some really neat things that you can code inside of Tableau, but for the most part, uh, it's very, it has a very heavy graphic interface to it. I like to pick on my econometrics friends and my colleagues who teach econometrics because at the bottom or near the bottom of each of these lists is Stata. And that's what we often ask our econometrics students to do in terms of running regressions and analyzing data. We ask them to do it in Stata. There's a big push towards R, but Stata is a really heavy component of that. Tableau, however, is the top is one of the top programs that they expect data analysts to be able to use. So for our program, Excel is required as part of an entry course into the economics major. So lots of students already have some exposure to Excel. Um, and depending on which courses they take, they may have some exposure to SQL as well. And so Tableau is kind of a really nice uh, next level program that I can ask my students to do. And has a relatively high listing among mid-senior level associates. So I tell my students this is a really good foot in the door, even though your entry-level jobs may not necessarily require that you do this, as you work your way up into this corporate structure, uh, you may be asked to work with Tableau more often. 
So I'd like to introduce how I use Tableau in my class. Joe does things a little bit differently. Uh, and so I could talk a little bit about both of uh, the ways that we approach Tableau. So for my course, I'm gonna talk about my labor economics course in particular. So in my course, what I've done is I've essentially wiped out the exams. It used to be a very standard course, had some problem sets, had some exams, and a final exam at the end of the semester. What I've done now is basically taken the exams out of the course and asked students to complete five guided projects during the semester. The guided projects really focus on replication. I tell them the types of visualizations they make and they're required to go through and uh, put data into Tableau, visualize the different concepts, put it together into a presentation, uh, and then peer grade the other students in the class. So the way it's set up is essentially there's five projects, 10% of their grade, uh, I take the best four of their assignments, so they're able to drop one. They do a guided project roughly every other week, and so we're kind of constantly working through Tableau during the semester. Each of the projects that they create will have two to four data visualizations, and I'll show you an example of that in just a second. Uh, they have to organize their visualizations into a dashboard, which is a singular kind of website that you can interact with those things. They have to write a three-page summary paper that talks about how they did what they did and how it connects to the material we talked about in class. They peer review five other students in the class, so it's really important for them to understand what other people are doing, but to also get better at offering criticism to others. At the end of the semester, instead of a final exam, we do a final project. So that's also worth 10% of their grade. They have to find their own data set and they have to pick their own visualizations as well, but we will cover most types of visualizations throughout the semester. The only real limitation is that they have to have a labor econ topic and it can't be a topic that we've covered already. So one of our very first assignments is looking at unemployment. So their final visualization can't just be on unemployment. So about half of their grade in my course comes from these projects. The rest of the material comes from small assignments throughout the semester. If you think back to kind of a traditional course where you'd have exams and the problem sets would help you on the exams, what I have instead is small assignments that will help them in terms of Tableau. So one of the very first assignments that they do during week two of the course is they do the Tableau toolbox assignment, which requires that they download it, add their access codes, uh, and go through the getting started tutorial on Tableau. So all of the little assignments help build up uh, to what they're doing in the main project. Joe, on the other hand, uh, has replaced his uh, problem sets essentially with Tableau assignments. So he still has exams in his upper level courses, uh, but instead of having them work on problem sets throughout the semester, they create small uh, visualizations throughout the semester. So they may create one graph each week uh, that would then be used to help understand the concepts that they are covering in class. So Tableau doesn't have to be a major assignment. It can be part of the small assignments or it can be part of the larger assignments. But what we have found over the past couple semesters is that the most important thing is that you introduce and use Tableau regularly if you're gonna use Tableau in your classes. Tableau does have a learning curve to it, just like any other program that you would use. The very first time is kind of rough and then they get better as the semester goes on. So to look at the projects that we've done in my labor economics course, the very first one I have them do is uh, looking at unemployment rates. So they each pick a state. There's a limit to the number of states that are available. So I have about 120 to 150 students each semester. So I spread them across the states. There's typically five to six people per state. And they have to visualize the unemployment rate in the United States and in their particular state. And then they also have to go in and download county level data for their chosen state. And so part of creating these dashboards require that they organize their material correctly, they format things correctly, they are uh, placing things where they're supposed to go. And so I talk a lot about the importance of the quality of their work, not just in doing work. So it's very easy to make a line chart in Excel. Um, it's much harder to make a line chart that looks really nice and can be interpreted on their own. And so the projects get a little bit harder as the semester goes on. So the first project is just a line chart and a uh, state map. The second project, it gets a little bit deeper. It has a scatter plot that has a perfect, that a legend that they'll make. And then things start to interact with each other. So when you click on one of the color boxes, it'll update with each other. So I'd like to take a second. I want to actually show you what it looks like uh, on the website rather than what it looks like as a, as a static image. The benefit of Tableau is that there's interactivity that happens with it. Uh, so everybody will have a Tableau public profile, which is free to students. Uh, and then when you go in and look at any particular visualization, you can actually interact with it. And if you hover over the line charts, it'll show you the unemployment rate uh, at different periods of time. And so a lot of it is, this is not the way it looks when it's made in Tableau. They have to go through and format it and update things. And so it requires that students actually are careful about how they're presenting their work, uh, which I think is probably not as common as it should be in a lot of our courses. If we wanna look at the one that's about automation, clicking on these will highlight 
the different occupations. And so they work with data in such a way that they are able to see how different it is than the particular trend line. Uh, if they were to select one of these particular occupations, this portion would update on the side. And so there's a lot of interactivity that goes into it uh, that allows students to think carefully about how they're presenting data and the work that they're presenting. You can also use Tableau in your classrooms rather than just as part of assessments. So this particular graph looks at the uh, employment shares in different occupations going back to the 1840 census. I used to put this up on the screen and I just kind of assumed students knew how to read it. Um, it seemed intuitive to me at first. And then it, it only took one brave student to ask, how do you read this graph? I don't understand what it shows. And that's where Tableau is really helpful. So you notice in that last one, I could click and highlight different parts of the graph. So this is in PowerPoint, it is just an image, but the actual visualization is made in Tableau. And what I'm able to do in Tableau is highlight one particular part of the graph. So if I ask my students, you know, is this change good for America? We might wanna highlight just the agricultural portion. And so what you can do in Tableau is you can highlight portions of your visualizations and then download those images and then when you put them together, it kind of pieces out uh, the original graph together. So rather than trying to hide or cover it, I can just show fractions of the data. Again, made in Tableau, but exported as an image that I can put in my PowerPoint. And so it's much easier to talk to my students about what this graph is showing, looking at employment and agriculture starting in the 1840s. Really large, large percentage of people in agriculture, today not so many. And I can use that extra white space to teach them about things that I was just talking about before, assuming that they knew how to read that graph. And I can work my way through each of those chunks and talk about, look, you know, manufacturing doesn't seem that much different, but it is smaller than it is before. And so this is a little bit about how I use some of the material from Tableau, the things that I have learned how to do in Tableau and introduced them into my courses. And so I could take that same original graph and break it into pieces and not have to worry about assuming that students know how to read the original graph on their own. Tableau has a ton of great resources. You don't have to learn this all on your own. Uh, Tableau is free for educators, it's free for your students. And so that was another really big selling point for me when I was thinking about how can I teach my students things and not ask them to simultaneously pay out of pocket for a heavy amount. So Tableau provides licenses for individual instructors, they provide licenses for individual students. If you're trying to run Tableau in a computer lab setting, uh, you can get uh, computer lab licenses as well. Tableau has a ton of videos that are available that cover a wide variety of topics. So whether you're trying to explore data, view data, create data, Tableau has a bunch of videos and resources available. I don't actually teach Tableau in class. During my lectures, I'm teaching about labor economics. Students are then asked to go out and create things in Tableau and verify the stuff that we're talking about in class on their own. So I leave a lot of that because it's a graphic interface. I leave a lot of that to Tableau to help them if they need it. There's tons of videos on LinkedIn Learning and on YouTube to help students get better at it. There are other economists and business faculty who have started to go into data visualizations in Tableau uh, and have already actually published a, a small little how-to on how to do it. Uh, so this was published in the Journal of Economic Education by a couple of my colleagues at different universities looking at how to use Tableau in the classroom and kind of a how-to guide. For students who are really good at Tableau and want to go a little bit further, Tableau also offers uh, specializations and certificates based on how well the students complete different tasks. Tons of resources available online, so I think the big selling point is Tableau is free. A lot of our topics and a lot of our research has a lot of really good data, especially publicly available data. So we've used it in a public finance course, an economics of crime course, a natural resource course, and our labor economics course. So any one of them that have really big data components, Tableau is a really great place to use that. Whether you're using it in place of exams, whether you're using it in place of your homework assignments, uh, Tableau is a really nice and easy way to integrate some data literacy uh, into your courses and help your students with a, with a really applicable program that will be helpful after graduation.